again. My audio was going in and out a little bit last time, so hopefully this is better today. Androcles and the Lion from Aesop's Fables. There was once in the days of ancient Rome a certain young slave named Androcles, who was so ill-treated by his master that his life became unbearable. Finding no remedy for what he had suffered, he said to himself, It's better to die than to continue to live in such hardship and misery as I am forced to suffer. Therefore, I must run away from my master. If I am captured and brought back, I know that I shall die and be punished a miserable death. But it is better to die at once than to live a life full of misery. If I am to escape, I must head into the deserts and the woods, which are inhabited only by beasts. But they cannot create, they cannot treat me any more cruelly than I have already been used by humans. Therefore, it is better that I trust myself with them than to continue to be a miserable slave. Having formed this resolution, he took an opportunity of leaving his master's house and hid himself in a thick part of the forest that was some miles outside the city. But here, the young, unhappy man found that he had escaped from one kind of misery only to experience another. He wandered about all day through a vast and trackless wood where his flesh was continually torn by thorns and brambles. He grew hungry, but could find no food in this dreary solitude. Soon he was ready to die with fatigue and lay down in despair in a large cavern, which he had found by accident. He had not lain long in the cavern before he had heard a dreadful noise, which seemed to be the roar of some wild beast, and which terrified him very much. He bolted up with the intention of escaping, and had already reached the mouth of the cave when he saw coming toward him a lion of immense size that prevented any possibility of retreat. Androcles now believed his death to be inevitable. But to his great astonishment, the beast advanced toward him at a gentle pace, without any sign of hostility or rage and uttered a kind and mournful wail, as if he wanted the assistance of the man. Androcles, who had always had a bold disposition, took courage from this and decided to examine his strange guest. He saw, as the lion approached him, that he seemed to limp upon one of his legs, and that the foot was extremely swollen, as if it had been wounded. <clears throat> Acquiring still more fortitude from the gentle manner of the beast, he went up to him and took hold of the wounded paw as a surgeon would examine a patient. He then perceived that a thorn of great size had penetrated the ball of the foot and was the cause of the swelling and that lameness that he observed too. Androcles found that the beast, far from resenting his familiarity, received it with the greatest gentleness and seemed to invite him to proceed. He therefore extracted from the thorn and pressing the swelling, forced out a quantity of liquid that had built up in the paw and had been the cause of so much of his pain. As soon as the beast felt himself thus relieved, he began to show his joy and gratitude with every expression within his power. He jumped about like a spaniel, wagged his enormous tail, and licked the feet and hands of his new physician. Nor was he contented with these demonstrations of kindness alone. From this moment, Androcles became his guest. The lion never went forth in quest of prey without bringing home what he caught and sharing it with his new friend. 
Androcles continued to live for several months in this savage state of hospitality. In time, however, wandering through the woods, he met with a company of soldiers sent out to apprehend him. He was taken prisoner by them and led back to his master. The laws of the time being very severe against slaves, he was tried and found guilty of having fled from his master, and as a punishment for his crime, he was sentenced to the arena, where he would face unarmed, a ferocious, wild animal that had been kept many days without food, and so be torn to pieces. When the fatal day arrived, Androcles found himself in spacious Colosseum, enclosed on every side, round which many thousands of people were assembled to view the mournful spectacle. Soon a dreadful yell was heard, which struck the spectators with horror, and a monstrous lion rushed out of an open gate and darted forward with erected mane and flaming eyes, <coughs> and the jaws that gaped like an open tomb. A mournful silence instantly fell over the crowd. All eyes were turned directly towards the, upo the up upon the victim, whose destruction now appeared inevitable. But the pity of the, of the multitude was soon converted into astonishment when they beheld the lion crouch submissively at his feet, fawn upon him as a faithful dog would do upon his master, and rejoice over him as a mother would of an unexpectedly recovering child, instead of destroying his defenseless prey. Well, the governor of the province, who was present, then called out with a loud voice and ordered Androcles to come explain this mystery. Androcles then related to the whole assembly everything that happened on his adventures in the woods, and concluded by saying that the very lion which now stood before them, well, that is the same lion here, who had been his friend and host in the woods. All the persons present were astonished and delighted with the story, to find that even the fiercest beasts are capable of being softened by gratitude and moved by humanity. They all asked for the governor to pardon Androcles for his crime, this was immediately granted, and the governor also made the young man a present of the lion, who had in this manner twice saved the life of Androcles. Well, that was only supposed to be about five minutes, but I get a bit dramatic. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, there will be an assignment posted later this week, and uh, while we're off for this weird reason, I figure I'll end my uh, little videos here with... Something similar to what Cato the Elder would end all of his speeches with in the Senate House. He would end his speeches with Carthago Delenda Est, meaning Carthage must be destroyed. Well, let's go with something different. Coronavirus Delendus Est. Well, later. <laughs>